Today we're going to wrap up our series on becoming smarter about becoming stronger by looking at some practical solutions. To get started today, let's do a quick summary. One of the things that we talked about is if you're in pain, you're stuck in a kind of a performance rut, whatever, or you're just trying to optimize your performance, what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to decrease threat in the body, all right? And we said one of the ways to decrease threat is to become stronger in ways that matter, all right? And that's what the phrase I want you to have in your head, stronger in ways that matter. Now, whenever we talk about becoming stronger in ways that matter, we then spend some time in three videos talking about three primary brain-body loops that are involved in strength. Um, loop number one was about neural drive. Loop number two was about strength coordination. And loop number three was about prediction. preparation. And we said that a good training program is going to give us an opportunity to explore strength movements in a way that take advantage and train all of these loops. Now the final piece of this puzzle that we mentioned was that the slightly unfortunate yet amazing part of the human brain is that our brain is so smart that it really, really wants to be good at specific things, not general things. And we talked about four different factors that come into that. We said every time we're doing any kind of strength training, our brain is learning how much force to create. It's learning for how long do I want to create that force. It's learning how quickly do I need to apply that force. And very importantly, in what angles, what postures, and what positions do I need to apply that force. Now, this is where a lot of people run into danger zones in their training because they adopt a certain training program, it makes them move in a certain way, and they get really good at moving in that way, and they become stronger, and their body changes, but it may be setting them up for injury, particularly if they're trying to translate what they do in a, in a more traditional environment out into an athletic environment. Let me explain, all right? And this is just gonna be kind of a practical explanation of this, and now, and then some solutions. So virtually every type of tool that we invent requires us to move in a certain way. Now I could have a barbell out here or a dumbbell out here, but I just chose a kettlebell for now. Now, I love kettlebells, and please, 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 don't send me any hate mail or anything like that because I'm, I'm talking about any kind of strength training or strength apparatus. I love them all, I love exercise, I love seeing what people can do to shape and change their body, but I want us to be intelligent about how we apply everything. So if I look at the tool of a kettlebell, awesome tool. I love a lot of the exercises that you can do with it. It's multi-planar, so you can actually do a lot of different exercises with this piece of equipment that can be super beneficial. But what I want you to recognize is that because of the nature of the bell, it's constantly being pulled down against gravity. So if I'm pressing it up, that's great. It's being pulled down against gravity, so I'm going to develop strength in that particular coordination pattern. If I take the bell and I swing it in front of me, again, the weight is still being pulled down toward the floor. Very, very useful in a lot of different ways. But what I want you to recognize is that in an athletic world or an athletic environment, very often I have to resist forces that are not exactly always directly down. If I'm a soccer player and I'm running, I may be having to push an opponent off to the side or pull an opponent behind me. If I'm a basketball player, I might be doing the same thing. So in order to offer practical solutions to these brain-body loops, and particularly the vector challenge that we all uh, are forced to deal with whenever we're thinking about training, we have to look at different tools. One of our favorite things to use in Z-Health are exercise bands. All right? Exercise bands are fantastic tools because they allow you to do a number of different things. For instance, if I have the exercise band on, Right? And I have it wrapped around my body, which is very nice because I can travel and move with it. I have the opportunity to explore strength through different ranges of motion. Now, this is a light band, so I'm not having to work very hard. So from a neural drive perspective, not getting a huge, huge challenge. I could just use a heavier band. But now think about endurance, speed, and vector. 
Think about the loops that we talk about, particularly coordination and preparation. Do I need to, as an athlete, be strong out here? As an athlete, do I need to be strong up here? The answer is yes. And in general, I don't need to be strong just in one plane of pushing or one movement. I need to be able to control and error correct in every position that I can think of. So our advice is that for every person, we need to be able to be strong in different ranges of motion. We need to include circles okay, in our training, at least at some level, particularly under load. And one of the easiest ways to make that happen, like I said, is to use exercise bands. You can attach them to yourself, you can attach them to something else, and they are almost infinitely variable in what they can provide you. So here are your basics when it comes to how do I become, how do I take this information on becoming smarter, about becoming stronger, and apply it? You have a couple different rules. Number one, at some level, you need to figure out how to exercise through a full range of motion. And a full range of motion does not mean, hey, I need to come from here to lock in my elbow. Think about all the movements that the shoulder is capable of making. I need to be going internal and external. I can make big circles. I can make loops. I need to be strong and be able to predict what this feels like. Remember our basic brain loops? For every joint in the body. So eventually, I'm going to recommend that at least a part of your training involves full range of motion under load for every part of your body. Okay, it's a simple idea, but if you can imagine that, imagine how much smarter that's going to make all the different loops that we've already talked about. And the second thing that I want you to consider when it comes to applying this information practically is not only does every joint need to move through its full range of motion, I also want you to think about loading in multiple planes. All right, now, to explain what that means, we've already said, hey, my, my joints all have big ranges of motion. I need to be strong in all of them. But now, what I want you to also think about is this. Let's say I have my band, and I'm gonna be doing, let's say a shoulder circle right here, okay? So now I'm starting to try to work on number one, try to increase my strength, improve my three loops through a full range of motion. But this is loading in one particular plane. I'm kind of pushing forward, and then I'm having to connect and, and control that with some slight variations. But you, can you also understand that it's going to be a completely different skill, or neural drive, uh, coordination, and predict, prediction challenge to now do this. I can be doing the same exact exercise, but now by changing the loading to be in a different plane of the body, I'm going to increase the challenge for my three brain body loops. That is, again, one of the huge advantages of having bands available. Now, it can sometimes be overwhelming because people go, oh, there's so many different things that I can do. Right? <laughs> That's awesome because you have an amazing body. It is capable of incredible things but we have to approach it intelligently in order to make, you know, to optimize our performance while staying out of pain. So there's our very practical solution to this whole brain body loop thing we've been talking about. Figure out in your own training how to work through a full range of motion at every joint and also load those joints, load those different body parts from different planes, different types of pull, because when you do so, you're going to, to take advantage of what you now know about how the brain and body talk to one another. Now, I understand that, that offers you a lot of options. And one of the things that I run into a lot with people, they go, wow, that's, there's just so much to think about. I'm, so yeah, there is. Now, I'm not gonna apologize for that because the human body is capable of doing amazing things, but we have to train it intelligently. So we've been talking about how do I become smarter, about becoming stronger, and this is one of the paths that we're gonna recommend that you explore. I actually love the idea of having so many different options available to me because it means I don't ever have to get bored. I can explore movement and work on mastering movement, work on mastering strength in so many different ranges of motion, in so many different ways, that I have a lifetime of practice ahead of me. And if you understand anything about Z-Health, we talk about creating the top 1%. And one of the things that we know about top 1% performers around the world is that they actually learn to fall in love with practice. And one of the best ways to fall in love with practice is to have a lot of variety and variability so that your brain can stay interested. One of the reasons I love sharing this type of information with you. So there you have it. If you have questions about how all of this rolls out, 
or if you need more guidance uh, than going, oh, I've got a band, what do I do with it? Please let us know. Today we're going to shark. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Zane did just Go now. away. Go away. <laughs> oh, sorry. Intro. Okay. Take two. <laughs>